How's it going ladies and gentlemen? I want to share a preventive maintenance tow tip with you today that could keep you off the side of the road when you're out towing with your family going on vacation. You're towing your camper. So a lot of us like to run these older Rams, the O2s to the O8s with the 5.967 Cummins in them. 5.7 Hemi. Um, the 6.4 Hemi they have in these trucks. Any kind of this is going to apply to any kind of gas engine or diesel engine. Or we're specifically going to be talking about cooling system. I'm going to give you a very brief rundown on why I'm going to talk about the cooling system when it comes to towing and how there's some preventative maintenance things that you can do there that could keep your truck off the side of the road when you're out on vacation towing to your campground wherever you're going. So, generally speaking, whatever you've got a camper or anything on your truck and you're towing, we can all feel the weight on the back of the truck. <laughs> for the most part. I mean, yes and no. I mean, I know it's back there, but everybody knows these trucks tow like there is nothing back there, but we obviously still know that it's there. So they're going to put a little extra load on your truck. Um, and so it's going to take a little bit more fuel to propel that truck with that camper down the road. So what does that mean for your cooling system? Well, that's a great question. If you've got your camper on your truck and you're going down the road 65, 70 or so towing, you're going to be putting more fuel in those cylinders to move your truck and that camper down the road and whatever you've got in your truck and your camper versus just your truck going down the road. you got less weight, less tires on the road when it's just your truck, so you're not going to require that much fuel to maintain that speed. Um, when you've got your camper on there, you've got more of a, you've got a load behind you, you've got a lot of weight, so your engine's gonna have to work a little bit more, and that's gonna mean more fuel going into those cylinders. And when more fuel goes into those cylinders, ladies and gentlemen, we produce heat. And when we produce heat, in order for that engine to perform at optimal operating temperature, we have to be able to get rid of that heat. Well, what do you mean by getting rid of that heat? You can't just throw it out or pour it out of the truck. No, what I mean is we have to move that heat from the coolant in the engine to the atmosphere around us, to the air in the atmosphere around us. That's what your coolant system does. So when you're rolling down the road and you're making all that heat, you need to be able to get rid of it. Well, your radiator assists in it, and this is gonna sound crazy, but a very, very cheap way for you to upgrade your cooling system <coughs> and allow your truck to run a little cooler when you're loaded is to um, replace your thermostat with a 180 degree thermostat. That's what I put in this truck. It's cheap, it's an easy upgrade, and it'll allow your cooling system to run a little bit cooler, especially when you're loaded, and that'll be great for your engine. So normally your fan will come on at about 215 degrees. So your engine is gonna to have to get up to about 109, or yeah, 190 degrees before that thermostat is gonna open and allow coolant to circulate to your radiator. And when that coolant starts circulating to your radiator at 190 degrees and over, that's when the outside air is gonna move across that radiator and it's gonna allow your radiator to transfer the heat and the coolant to the atmosphere. Engineers call radiators heat exchangers. Mechanics, technicians, you know, we call them radiators because they radiate heat to the atmosphere. So tomato, tomato. So with your factory 190 degree thermostat, that's how it's gonna roll. Now, if it's 100 degrees outside, 105, you're pulling a huge hill with your camper behind you, and you, you are watching your coolant gauge, and it's climbing 190 degrees, the thermostat opens, but you're still loaded, pulling a big hill, going 65, 70. Your 5.9 is still dumping fuel in those cylinders. <coughs> so then the question becomes, who can make, who can, can your radiator get rid of the heat faster than your engine can produce it? You want it to be, my radiator can get rid of the heat faster than my engine can produce it. If it's the other way around, you are going down on the side of the road. Well, why do you say that? Well, that's a great question. In one of the other videos that I posted, we talked specifically about tires only. It's such a corny topic and who wants to talk about tires? But at the end of the day, if you pop a camper tire and you go down on the side of the road, there was probably something visual that you could have caught that you could have fixed and would have prevented you from going down on the side of the road and having a bad first day camping. So when, you're, when your tire pressure goes up, um, or yeah, when your tire pressure goes up, the, the, that means that your air inside the tire, the air molecules are rubbing together and getting warm. So when that happens, when you're rolling down the road, your tire pressure will go up. 
Same thing inside a cooling system. The hotter your coolant gets, the higher the pressure in the cooling system. So this cap, I think, that's got a 16 on it. So that's a 16 PSI cap. So I can get up to 16 PSI of pressure in this cooling system before my cap opens and relieves coolant out. Or maybe I break a radiator clamp, which I need to replace. That's one thing that I'm going to do here in the near future, just to be on the safe side to, for reliability when I'm out camping with my family, is I'm gonna replace my radiator hoses and my top one, my bottom one with new clamps. Because you don't want your engine to get real hot and build heat faster than what your radiator can get rid of, rid of it, and then you split a hose or a clamp blows off. The hotter it gets, the more pressure in the cooling system and the more susceptible you could be to blowing a hose off, losing all your coolant, you could have an overheat situation and destroy your engine. There's all kinds of things that can go on. So you wanna just avoid that altogether. So 180 degree thermostat I picked up and put in here and I noticed when I was driving the truck that my coolant gauge, the needle, was a little bit further to the left and it did not get anywhere up near the 200. It always stays to the left of the 200 when I'm not loaded, <coughs> which I like. A lot of people are like, well, if you put the 180 degree thermostat in the winter time, you're not gonna build any heat in the cab. You'll be able, you will build heat in the cab and you will be able to heat your feet and your body so you can feel your, your, your legs and your hands. You will be able to build heat. It's not the end of the world, that's not gonna happen still be able to build heat with a 180 degree thermostat. So you don't have to worry about that. So I put the 180 degree thermostat in. What that means when I'm towing with that camper, that 180 degree thermostat, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's gonna open 10 degrees sooner at 180 degrees, and it's gonna start allowing coolant to circulate out to that radiator, and we can start transferring heat from that radiator to the atmosphere. So when I'm loaded <coughs> and I'm pulling a hill and I'm dumping fuel like crazy in those cylinders and I'm building a lot of heat, I'm that much sooner to be able to start getting rid of heat through my radiator. So one of the things that I want to share with you, and you're probably going to think I'm crazy, but I had the camper's like seven or 8,000 pounds. I think on the side of it, it says it's 7,000 or 7,500, and then you throw your crap in there, the back of my truck, plus the weight of the truck and all that. So you've got, you know, whatever, I don't know, um, a lot of weight that you're, that you're towing. It was between 95 and 100 degrees both ways when we were driving that 630 or 650 miles each way. And there were two hills in one of the states that I pulled when I know it was 95 degrees at least. I crested the top of the hill going 70 with my cruise set, stayed in, stayed in fourth gear the whole time. This truck's got a 40 RE in it. It's built. I can do a video on that sometime too. But I stayed in fourth gear, um, 70 miles an hour, pulled that hill like it was, you know, totally fine. And my coolant gauge, the needle moved just over the middle line, just to the right of it, it was still touching it and I crested the top of the hill and she dropped back down. My coolant fan didn't even come on. 95 plus degree heat, my fan didn't even come on towing. It was great. So um, that's one of the cool things that I like about it is you just, you just don't build a lot of heat. And I mean, granted, it's not a fifth wheel and it's not 14, 15,000 pounds, but let's say you do have a fifth wheel and you are towing 14, 15,000 pounds. That thermostat crack and open 10 degrees sooner, start the process of getting rid of heat at the radiator is a great thing to have. Now, let's say you do have that big um, fifth wheel, 14, 15,000 pound camper on the back and you've got the thermostat in there and um, you're still going over uh, 200 degrees and you're getting up near 215 or so, the fan's coming on and it's going like crazy. You definitely wanna make sure that you've got a good functional fan clutch. So these Rams, the 5.9s, they've got an electric over viscous fan clutch and you really wanna make sure that the electric portion of it works because what you don't want to have happen is, is you're pulling a big hill with your cruise set, your coolant's creeping up and um, you, your thermostat opens, you're moving coolant, but you're still building heat because you're pulling a lot more weight than me. So you might, you might build heat a lot faster. You want that fan to come on and assist pulling air across that radiator so you can cool your engine down so you don't blow radiator hose or overheat your engine and be on the side of the road. So you want to have a good functional fan clutch. <coughs> a way to kind of check it is to turn your AC on um, while you're sitting still on a warm day. You turn your AC on and the ECM should electronically engage the clutch and you'll hear your fan, um, you'll hear it cutting through the air a little bit so you'll know that it's working. Um, you can always go out for a test drive too before you go out on your initial trip with your family, hop on the road when it's hot and just check it out and um, run, it through the, run it through the gears. 
build a little heat, make sure everything's working like it should. And you want to have a, a good sound radiator. So you can see these fins in the radiator back here. So if, you're, if you are somebody that may operate your truck off-road or maybe you've got to drive down a dirt road from time to time and stuff like that, you want to make sure that your radiator is clean. You want to make sure airflow, air can move across that radiator no problem. If you're not real sure if it's clean or not, you can get a flashlight at night and shine it in there and then look and see if you can see light on the other side of it. <coughs> um, if you can't, that indicates that your radiator fins are blocked with dirt and debris and um, that will affect your ability, your efficiency to be able to transfer heat from your radiator to the atmosphere. So it could put you in a position where your engine's building heat, your thermostat's opening, your fan's even coming on, but the air can't move across the radiator. So even with your fan on, no air is coming across it because your fins are blocked. So you don't want to run into that. You don't want that to happen. If that happens, you literally have a big tank right here that just holds coolant and you don't have any way to get rid of your heat. So to keep yourself from going down on the side of the road when you're camping with your family, you really want to have a good sound cooling system. So you want to make sure your radiator's clean. Um, your hoses, you want to have good hoses. You want to inspect those and your clamps. Make sure those are in good shape. You can always put a 180 degree thermostat in. It's really easy to do um, and they're cheap. And while you're at it, I always tell people to fill the system with fresh coolant, flush it all out and put red in. Extended life coolant, that's really easy to do. Um, you can, always, you can um, flush all your green out if you have green in, just put a garden hose in there, run a little water through it, drain it all out, and then you can go back with red, extend a life coolant, and that will maintain your cooling system. <coughs> the last thing that you want to check for is, it's kind of hard to see, but your water pump, well you can see that little shiny piece right there, that's your water pump, right there. There's a weep hole on your water pump and you can take a flashlight and look up from the bottom, take a flashlight and shine it up there and just basically look on the front of the engine and see if you see any signs of dried coolant. If you do see signs of dried coolant, that's an indication that maybe your water pump is possibly leaking. And if you see that, you'll definitely want to replace your water pump before you go camping with your family. So I hope this tow tip has helped you today to keep your truck reliable, get some longevity out of your engine with some increased cooling system performance be safe out there camping thanks for watching give me a thumbs up if you would please